What's up, everybody? Uh, Michael E. Backwoods Life Podcast, and as you can see or hear now, I'm broadening my horizons from just people hopping on and listening to me ramble about whatever goes through my head on a daily basis, which is I scare the crap out of myself most days. But I've, I've got a good buddy of mine here now. We, we've known each other for, good gosh, man, five or six years now, uh, Chad Mendez. And I, I'll prelude this with Chad is for a guy that hits people for a living, he's probably one of the nicest guys I've ever met in my life. Probably one of the most <laughs> positive people, the greatest attitude, just just a super guy to be around. Chad, I appreciate your time, buddy. Thank you for, for hopping on here with me. Yeah, that means a lot, man. Thank you. Yeah, it's crazy how, how time has flown, right? Like, I think back to, and I, I remember seeing some of my fight shorts. That was probably even more than five or six years ago where – we we're, you know, working together and stuff, but yeah, man, it's crazy where time, time goes. It's scary. It's crazy. Like you said, I mean, I, I see your, your elk in the background there, you know, you, you look back at your trophies and you're like, man, has it really been, you know, 10 I years know. since I killed that deer or, or, or whatever that case is. Yeah. I mean, mom's here, I got them all over the place. And it's like, where does time go, man? And I mean, congratulations, you know, the wife and a couple yeah, kids thank now. I mean, yeah, you know, thank you. I'm officially a girl guys. dad, man. Two girls. <laughs> you're gonna now. lose. You're losing every bathroom vote in the house, right? <laughs> oh yeah, I'm completely outnumbered now. But oh man, it's good. I love. I love having daughters. My my oldest daughter is. She's almost three in April, and she's getting to that fun, that fun age where like we have turkeys and stuff that always cruise through our back property. And just yesterday or two days ago, they're uh, out here. They're already starting to tar- starting to strut and gobble and. Uh, there was a bunch of toms strutting in the in the backyard, and she got there and and whistle, and, they, and sound off, and she gets all happy and stuff. So it's pretty cool, man. I'm excited this year. We're gonna. It was our first year we hunted. We in the fall, I killed a turkey with her in the blind, sitting next to me, which was so awesome, man. She's just sitting there, you know, just got up. She's all bundled up, eating her little yogurt pouch. Her little legs are hanging off the edge of the stool, and just smoked one and. When I shot, actually, uh, Spook gobbled a bunch of the other ones, and she was just like, "Oh, that's so cool!" <laughs> so, and it's, I'm, I'm pumped, man. She's my little tomboy, little daddy's girl. So we're that's gonna awesome. spring get after it. I'm, I'm pretty, I'm excited. It's gonna be her turn before too long. I know, you know that, right? Know. And you're gonna, you're gonna lose all your tags. It's gonna be like, <laughs> okay, you're taking me, Dad, right? It's like my turn. Yep. I'm shooting all the time. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I have buddies that have daughters and even sons that. Same thing. That's, they said that exact same thing. Just wait till they start hunting, and you lose all your hunting rights. <laughs> it's all, it's all worth it, man. It's yeah, it's awesome, worth. bro. Um, well, first off, I, I mean, we'll go a few things here on this podcast. But first off, I mean, where are you at? It looks like you're you're probably at home right there at the office. And and what's coming up? What what are you doing? Yeah, I'm actually. This is our like fins and feathers. I also do the provider and some American R and B stuff out of this office. But um, just got all my. <laughs> stuff I get to look at on the wall and you guys can smell the stuff but my horn porn uh but now I'm here just getting media done all day today I think we started at uh 10 this morning and I'll go through probably about three o'clock today uh, I'm here in Northern California so I'm um, just busting out a bunch of the media stuff leading up to the fight I got a fight next Saturday uh, my bare knuckle boxing debut um so we're flying out to Florida on on Wednesday and uh, we'll be out there just cutting weight and last last few pounds weigh in and then hopefully get in there and kick this dude's butt on Saturday. So uh, I'm feeling good, man. This is a, a great training camp. Uh, got to focus on nothing but boxing and strength and conditioning. So uh, it was it was a lot of fun. It's been almost a year since we got this whole ball rolling, which, you know, it's probably it is the longest preparation I've had for any one fight in my entire career. So uh, we just had you know, things going back and forth with fight dates changing and, um, you know, locations changing. And so it was just kind of a long process, but I just trained and prepared the entire time. And we're finally here. February 19th is going down in Florida. So I'm pumped. That's awesome, man. I, I've been watching, you know, your videos and everything you've been posting on social media and it does it like you like your training camps have been pretty intense and hardcore and, and I don't know if it's just – I've been watching, you know, I mean, we follow each other and everything that we said, but, but dude, to, to me, and I'm outside looking in, and trust me, I'm not a fighter. I, I, got, I don't want to get hit the face by anybody. <laughs> uh, but it looks to me like you have progressed so much, you know, on the, especially on the boxing side. I mean, that's what you're focusing on. But, man, watching some of those videos, 
there's no way I'd want to be the guy in the ring with you, even with the pads on, taking them punches. Yeah. It, you yeah. know, like you, you've really stepped it up, bro. It, look, it looks, it looks like you're, you're dialed in. And this guy may have a, you know, he might have a bad day. I'm hoping that's the case. You know, this guy's, he was a pro boxer. He had like four pro boxing fights, so he knows what he's doing on his feet. But, uh, you know, his last fight, pressure broke him. He he took a knee twice just from pressure. So uh, there's no possible way this guy's gonna outwork me. You know, obviously everybody has a puncher's chance in any type of striking game you play. But, um, you know, ultimately, I think if we stick to the game plan, I mean, this guy, this guy shouldn't even touch me. So we'll see, man. It's, you know, it's the fight game. Anything can happen, but I'm excited. I feel good. You know, like I said, I've been able to focus on nothing but boxing and just it's crazy to see, you know, I go back sometimes and watch some of my first sparring session about a year ago when we first jumped into this, knowing we were going to do the bare knuckle. And watching sparring from then till last week, I mean, it's night and day. So it, it's pretty damn cool to see the improvements, feel the improvements, and just know all that hard work's actually paying off. So uh, hopefully next Saturday we get in there and it's, you know, a quick night, get in there and knock that dude out, no injuries, <laughs> and then get back into the field and get back to the fun stuff. So we'll That's see. Right, That's yeah. right. And, um, you know, so you fought in the UFC for, for many, many years. You had a great career there. I mean, uh, I know you, you you accomplish a lot. I mean, in, in that short amount of time, because the fight game, you know, it's it's it, it's not something you're gonna do until you're 65, really, and retire. You know, I mean, it's yeah. it's a it's a get in, get after it. You know, get yours and, and go on down the road and see what happens. But how how different is this and the preparation than than when you were in the UFC? Man, it is. It's pretty crazy. It's I don't want to say it's easier, but it's so much less stressful. I mean, you think about it. You're training for for mixed martial arts. So we're doing boxing, wrestling, jujitsu, uh, strength and conditioning, kickboxing. I mean, there's just so many different things that you have to focus on your knees, elbows, uh, submissions, wrestling, cardio, um, you know, five minute rounds versus two minute rounds. Um, there's just a ton of stuff that goes into it. So it's, it's been really, really nice being able just to focus on one discipline for this entire time. And it's, I almost feel like sometimes I'm not doing enough. Like I'll do, you know, three or four hours of training in a day. And afterwards, you know, I'll go home and eat or rest. And I'm just like, God, I, I could probably squeeze in another workout. Like I, got, I could do more, like, you know, uh, mainly because normally you're doing in mixed martial arts, you're having to do like three workouts a day, just so you're training each discipline enough, you know? And so um, it's, it's been nice. I actually really enjoyed it. Um, you know, and so, like I said, we'll see. This is going to be my first time ever doing a straight boxing fight. I've always been a wrestler, obviously. Fought in the UFC, did MMA for uh, over 10 years. But, you know, this will be the first time just a straight boxing fight. So, um, we'll see, man. I'm either going to love it or I'm going to hate it. I will know next weekend. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, man. I mean, I think you'll do great, bro. I mean, just watching your career, I mean, it's been fun. And, and I, I love how, how much you love the outdoors. And I know that's that's more along the lines of, of, of what, you know, you and I have in common and, yeah. and being there. And the, the thing that I want to transition from, you know, you, you in the fight world, your whole career, uh, I say your whole career, I mean, you know, since I've known you anyway uh, on a personal level, and, and we've been following each other and keeping up with each other. You know, your diet has been a key. And, and I think as any athlete, and I played baseball for years and years, I, and I wish I'd have known things as I got older about my diet yeah. that I could have put yep. forth, you know, back in the day. And maybe I'd have been a better athlete uh, overall. Mm -hmm. But with that being said, you know, the provider cookbook um, that, that, that you helped, you and Chad Building uh, did together, um, and I, everybody listening to this, and you really need to check this cookbook out. It's got some great recipes with all kind of wild game in it. And I know you take pride because, like I said, following each other, I see we see a lot of what we do. Your mm -hmm. cooking point, man, I, I really want to just hang out with you in camp just, just to get some of that Mendez menu. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? It's, so, yeah. um, you know, I know <laughs> that's been a big part of, of you as a professional athlete is, is dialing in your diet with wild game. For sure, man. Food, I've always had a very, very strong connection with food, like, my wife's always talking about love language and I, you know, and that whole, that whole system. And I'm like, food is my love language. <laughs> I love cooking food. I love eating food. I love making food for other people to enjoy. Um, here's the cookbook. So we, me and Belding launched this cookbook uh, this, this last year, um, put a ton into this, man. We signed a big deal with Ben Bella as a national publishing deal. Um, 
I basically just went through and picked out both mine and his favorite recipes that we've either seen in different hunting camps all over the world or have created or tweaked or made our own. Um, and we also have just a bunch of friends in the outdoor industry that love coming up with cool wild game recipes and have picked their brains and used some of their favorite recipes in there as well. So we also have a bunch of different hunting stories that, um, you know, I've been through throughout my life, same with building. Uh, I have some training tips and uh, different diet tips in there a little bit as well. But um, yeah, man, food's always been something that's uh, always drawn me to, to, to basically want to share with other people. I think it comes from two things. My dad was always a big uh, uh, cook in our, our house. He was the one that was always in the kitchen making everything. Um, I remember just love watching, like get, getting in there and just watching him go to work, create different things and getting creative. And, um, you know, if we go out to a restaurant and something's like really good at a restaurant, he, he would always figure out how to make that exact same thing at home. So we would have our own version of it. And um, I just remember watching him and seeing the passion that he had in there. Um, and then also, I think years of cutting weight from wrestling and fighting, um, you know, those those last few days when you're at the hotel and you're, you know, pretty much starving, you haven't eaten much for, you know, hour or a couple of days or 24 hours or whatever, um, you know, and you're sitting there while well, I'd, I'd watch the food channel on TV and just like take notes like, oh, God, I'm going to make that whenever this is you know, all over, I'm going to get home and I'm going to make that, oh, but I would do it this way and like tweak it a little bit. And, you know, and so food was always something I was like super drawn to. Um, and so we decided to, you know, put together the cookbook and come up with um, a bunch of different recipes for both wild game and domestic meats. And really you can swap out domestic meats for any of these, um, any of these recipes. But for me, it's, you know, wild game has been a huge part of my life. You know, I grew up hunting and fishing with my dad since I was a little kid. Um, we'd always, you know, live off venison or uh, wild pig or whatever it may be, uh, you know, throughout the years, my wrestling career and stuff like that. And then once I graduated from college and moved out on my own um, from there, I basically up here in Northern California started picking everybody's brain, like where, where, where's a good turkey hunting spot or where can I go find wild pig or, or blacktail or, and I started just going out and loading up stuff on my own here uh, and just using that through all my training camps, which, you know, I found that I felt so much better doing it. And I think a lot of the guys on the team actually realized that too. And man, I, I kind of became the, uh, I guess like slang and meat, if you will, I was, you know, Hey, let me get some of that venison. I got a camp coming up. So I'd bring coolers of stuff to the, to the gym and share with a bunch of my teammates through their training camps and stuff. And, um, you know, it's just something I've kind of grown into and loved to do. And I think a lot of the guys on the team are starting to realize that too. And I actually got a few of them to sit down and do their hunter safety course, guys that have never hunted for real city boys. And they're starting to realize like, I need to get out and learn how to do this stuff. So, uh, the last, I think it was last year or two years ago now, right at the beginning of COVID, like we had a handful of guys sit down and we did the whole course and now they're all hunting and shooting guns and it's pretty cool to see. So, um, but yeah, going back to it, wild game has definitely been a huge part of my diet still is. Um, in fact, I even did the carnivore diet for, for four months, uh, this last year. And I wanted to see, cause I saw Rogan was doing it. He has an autoimmune disease and I have a couple other buddies that have autoimmune disease. I have psoriasis really bad, which is an autoimmune disease. And so, um, basically I wanted to see what that would do to it. Cause it was actually getting really, really bad and, um, helped it out tremendously. Um, I did it for four months and then that's really when I started getting into the training more for this fight. Um, so I started adding, adding in more fruits, um, you know, some carbs like potatoes and stuff, depending on, you know, the time of the day or post-workout or whatever, but, um, yeah, it, it definitely helps. And I felt really, really good sticking to that carnivore diet. Um, and definitely something if I would recommend people try, if there are, autoimmune diseases that they have or something that might be held obviously talk to your doctor i'm not a doctor so don't don't go solely off of my advice but i would recommend looking into it for sure gotcha man that, that's awesome to be able to tie in you know your two worlds together in, in that food prep and you know just under, understanding i think what us as hunters we realize while we're out there in god's creation that these animals were put here for us to consume mm -hmm. And when, you know, and, and having these recipes and these things, you bring that, you know, from the field to the table, like everybody talks about, 
coming full circle with that. I mean, that that's why we do what we do. Yes, the trophy, like, you know, the antlers and everything that, that we yeah, are, yeah. you know, are, are awesome. But when you sit down and, and take a bite of that back strap or tenderloin or, or whatever, and you know, man, like, I earned this one. This is Thank very you. much worth every bit of it, man. It's, 100%. And, and, and that's one thing, like, back in the day when, when I was, um, like, at hunting camps with my dad and my uncles and cousins and all that, man, if you killed a deer, you're giving up the back strap that night. Like, yep. that's going on yeah. the grill that night. There's no yeah. way around yeah. that. Yeah. So yeah, that, that's, that's super cool, man. I mean, and that's – that mentality is one of the main reasons me and Belding wanted to start the provider brand. Um, you know, it's basically us wanting to keep that tradition alive. I feel like so much of today's population, you know, it, it, there's such a huge disconnect. And now we're looked at like we're evil. Uh, people that want to go out and hunt their own food and provide for themselves and live off the land. That's like the, the, the weird people now and it's like where where did that flop where did that flip like we all you know that's how we've all gotten to where we are is, is going out and killing an animal and eating the meat you know that's living off of that growing your own garden growing your own vegetables whatever you want to do but um you know for us it's wanting to keep that passion alive like i i have two daughters now and i want both of them to understand the reason why we hunt it's not you know i, t I tell this all the time People, there's a lot of people, especially here close to San Francisco. We got a lot of Bay Area people that just are completely disconnected from hunting. And they picture hunting like a bunch of us hillbilly rednecks chugging beers in the back of a truck, driving around with automatic weapons, just mowing stuff down. And it's like, that's not what hunting is. And so, you know, I went on Rogan's podcast and really explained what fins and feathers was, talked about, you know, my passion for the outdoors and why I hunt and why you know, why I do it, live off, to live off the meat for my camps and stuff. I have some, uh, a couple neighbors in my neighborhood who have never in their life hunted. In fact, some of them were even vegan. The guy was telling me, and he's like, I listened to your Rogan podcast and it really opened my eyes to hunting. And he's like, I, re I really want to get into it. And in fact, he hit me up about booking a fins and feathers trip recently for him and his sons to go out and learn and put some meat in their freezer. So, um, ultimately that's my goal in life i mean being able to spread that that passion and that knowledge and that you know just feeling of providing and being a provider uh is is what it's all about i mean for me like i said my daughters i, I want them to understand why we do this i want them to you know really know what hunting and fishing and living off the land is all about and you know that's that's something i i will do and that's something that i will get to for sure and that's one thing that you hit on right there, you know, passing that on, you know, to your neighbors and, you know, people that are around you that may not have been in our environment ever, but they're interested in it. I think that's a trend that more and more people are realizing, especially uh, COVID changed a lot of this world now. Yes. And, and I'm not going to say all for the bad, but there yeah. was, there was some good that came out of it. I think a lot of people really went, when, Hey, you know, we're two weeks to stop the spread. No, everybody stay, you know, in your bubble and don't uh -huh. go anywhere. Like me, what I do, I go to turkey camp, bro. It was turkey season. <laughs> yeah. I just learned something gobblers, you know. And, uh -huh. and and I think a lot of people did stuff like that. They're like, well, you know, that had access to land or or yeah. place they could they could go outside and and do those things. And I think from the the big picture of that, I think it opened up people's eyes to the what if scenarios. So mm -hmm. what if the grocery store supply chain runs down? Like yep. now, you and I are sitting in a seat where you know we do have a freezer. Full of, full of meat, you know, we're, we're not going to go without that part. And guess what? If that runs low, there's a spot right back here about a yeah. hundred yards that I can go get some more, you know? And, 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 and that's the reality of the world we live in today because it's such a crazy, you know, everything is crazy that's, that's going on. And, I'm, and you know, from our standpoint, I think as, as you, know, you can call us good old redneck country boys, whatever you want to yeah. call us, we really want to just live our life, be left alone, and then go enjoy the outdoors like we do. Heck yeah. That's, that's really as simple as I can put it for, for guys. I like agree, guys. man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I agree. Yeah, I, I'd say last year with, the, with COVID, I mean, last year for Fins and Feathers with taking people on hunts, we've had, yeah, last year was our, our biggest year to date. And we had, I don't know the percentage, but it was, I'd say at least half of the people that booked were first time hunters. And it was really cool. I mean, that's such a cool thing to see because a lot of them are like, look, I see 
what you're doing on your Instagram. I love that you're living off these animals that you're going out and killing. You know, you have a, a freezer full of venison and wild turkey and stuff. I want to learn how to do that. And so last year, I think with everything going on, like you said, the whole meat shortage and people kind of freaking out, like, holy crap, like, you know, if this, if this gets turned off, what am I going to do? I need to learn how to do this myself. And I think we had a lot of people, you know, a lot of people watch um, Ranella's podcast as well, which I think is awesome. You know, his show meat eater and just getting uh, that, that word out and, and really showing everything broken down to somebody that's never done it before or never understood it. He's very good at articulating that and making it understandable for those types of people. Um, you know, and so we get a lot of people that are like, I've been watching Ranella, I've been watching you. I want to learn how to do this. I want to see, you know, myself getting in the field and learning how to hunt an animal, you know, doing the whole process once I kill it, gutting it, doing all that stuff and being able to process the meat myself and like put it in my freezer and live off that. So it was actually pretty cool last year. Like you said, there, there was a lot of negative, but I think there are definitely some positives that have come out of everything over the last two years. So um, yeah, it's pretty cool to see. And that's, I'm just so passionate about that, man. I absolutely love taking out first timers or people that are just kind of curious on how to learn, you know, they, they really want to learn the outdoors and like how to go out and provide for themselves. I think that's super cool. And uh, I just love being a part of it. And that's what it's all about, man. As guys in the positions that you and I are to have an audience that have reach, you know, we owe it to the future of what we love to, to pass that on, to be passionate about it. Because, man, you, you hit the nail on the head a while ago. You think people people think that we, we ride around, drink beer, and shoot guns out the windows and kill deer. Yeah. And there, there's probably some people that do that. I know that I've seen yeah, some of this stuff of firsthand that I don't like. Um, yeah. And, I'm, you know, everybody's got their own deal. But if you go talk to those guys, they're not going to be passionate about it like we are. Yeah, you know, they're, 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 they've got, you know, there's, there's, there's bad apples in every bunch. It doesn't matter what business you're in, mm -hmm. you walk of life. And I, I was talking to someone earlier today, and I mean, I, I, this earth that we live on, um, no matter what your beliefs are, it is this constant good versus evil on some level. Mm -hmm. And just like in the hunting world, I mean, there's people that do it the right way, um, and there are people that do a bunch of illegal stuff. But, yeah. um, you know, from us to show doing it the right way, just like you do, um, with, with fins and feathers, that, that's that's one thing I want to hit on right quick um, for people that don't know about that. I mean, basically, you, you offer up hunting camps and fishing trips, and, and you got your team of guys, you know, other athletes. Um, I know uh, Clay Guido's one that, that yeah. does a lot with you, and uh, you're out of favor. And, I mean, the list goes on and on. you got a lot of guys that you're, you know, your peers in, in the MMA world and, and stuff like that, but then you branch out with, you know, basketball players and football mm -hmm. players and, and all kind of, you know, artists and stuff like that. So if, if, I mean, just right quick, where can people find out a little more about that? If you want to go to that. Yeah, program? you can check out our website. It's finsandfeathers.com. And we spell them, I don't know if you guys see it, fins and feathers with a Z. Um, and so you head over to our website. We basically put together every year a, a full year long schedule. So like trip dates will all be set in stone, like for the species, location, date, um, really the only thing that changes is what celebrities will be on these trips with people. So basically we'll have the schedule set. Um, you can book whatever you want to do. If you want to go do a mule deer hunt in Utah or, you know, fly out to Mexico with us and do a fishing trip at Cedros Island or whatever it may be. Um, you can book the spot and then, you know, we'll have different UFC fighters or pro ball players, or we even have some actors and pro snowboarder, PBR guys somebody either one two sometimes even three of those athletes will be on the trips with these clients so you know they're already going to do a cool trip you know all these trips i've personally done myself um and they're awesome outfitters awesome locations very game plentiful um just make sure everything's very professional and, and fun and then now they get to do it alongside one of these you know guys or girls uh that they get to watch on tv in a sport or you know just whatever they're doing so um, it's just a unique experience. You know, there's there's outfitters all over the world. You could just go and pay to go do a hunt and go up there and have a cool hunt and head home. So th this is something that's different. You know, you get to do it alongside somebody that, you know, like I said, you, you watch in a sport on TV who also absolutely loves hunting and fishing. All of my friends that are, you know, the athletes on any of these trips are huge outdoorsmen and women um, and just love to have the same passion that all of us have for it. Um, which is what's cool, man. I've, you know, we, we put this together back in 2015 and I just wanted a way for me and all my closest buddies to be able to hunt and travel and fish all over the world. 
And so this, you know, dreams coming to dreams coming true on this one with Fins and Feathers, man. It's, you know, Guida is now a business partner. He's running the gills and thrills side of it, which is strictly fishing and entertainment. So he, he takes guys on like, you know, really cool fishing trips. Say it's a Florida fishing trip where they go do tarpon and uh, Goliath grouper. And then the next day they're at a UFC fight and he gets them like backstage or, you know, get to meet Dana or whatever it may be, some type of VIP treatment at a, at a sporting event or a concert or something like that. So um, we have the fins and feather stuff. We have the gills and thrill stuff. Um, and it's just been fun, man. Like I said, it's, it's cool spreading the love, spreading the passion for the outdoors, getting to meet so many cool different people that share that passion, that love, or don't know that they have that passion, but they want to learn how to do it. And then they find it. So um, it's just been fun, man. It's super cool. I honestly, a lot of the times I'm like on these trips, I've, I've told my business partner, like we're getting paid to do this. I almost feel like that's wrong. <laughs> like, this is just so much fun. We're like reeling in like 30 pound bluefin tuna, 50 pound bluefin tuna, you know, we're like high fiving and it's just, everyone's having a good time. And it's, it's pretty cool, man. I really am blessed. And I feel like I'm pretty damn lucky with all this for sure. There's no doubt, man. But you, you know, at the end of the day, you've worked hard for that. You know, you, you paid your dues. You had your UFC career, and now you're doing, you know, more and more stuff with Bare Knuckle, and you you've had this vision along the way to tie in something that you love yeah. to do and use that platform um, to to grow and to reach out to more and more people. So that that's what it's all about, man. And I, I admire you. you for that to, to have Thank that passion. You. You know, there's a lot of guys in your position that would have just been like, well, my, you know, my, my career is over, quote unquote, and yeah. I'm just going to sit back and watch TV and, and do whatever I want to do now. You know, and, and if I'm too ADD, to... bro. <laughs> I can't do that. I can't, I'm like you, man. I can't, I can't sit still. I'm the worst person in the world to be at home on the weekend. Like, yeah. I, I, it is terrible. Well, I, I've got to have a plan what I'm yep. going to accomplish today or mm -hmm. today was a waste. And that could be. Yeah, I agree. My wife's like, can you ever just sit down and watch TV with me or something? Or just let's just relax for like 15, 20 minutes. And I'm like, uh, <laughs> I can't do it. I try, but and I'm the same. If there's not a plan, if it's a day off or something from training, like in my mind, I'll at least like, okay, at this time I'm going to go out and shoot my bow and like, at least get some practice in there. You know, we're going to set something up for the morning, but yeah, man, it's crazy. I, I my wife's like, just sit your butt down, man. <laughs> it's it's hard to do. It's hard to do. Is <laughs> I think that's that that's that's the driven part of, of mm -hmm. us that in the outdoor industry are successful because mm -hmm. if you sit around and do nothing, you know, you just wasting yeah. time. You're wasting yeah. opportunities. So, mm -hmm. um, but man, I, I appreciate you hopping on here. Um, I, I know you got more stuff to do today. You're, you're getting ready to go out, and, and you're gonna have an awesome fight coming up. I, I know you're gonna do well, man. I know you're prepared. So one ending question for you. Mm -hmm. If I said, all right, Chad, and you probably get this one a lot. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you your bow because I know you, you thrive on bow hunting. All right, what's, what's your one thing? I say, hey, this is what you're going to hunt, period. That's it. You got one thing to hunt. That's what I thought. What you bulls. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I, I got to say screaming bull elk for sure. Yeah, it's it's unreal. We get, we get, you, I'm sure you've been on some pretty – Badass elk hunts, huh? I've been okay. on a few good ones, man. Yeah. yeah. It's been, it's been, yeah I mean, it's, I, it's unlike being, anything being, else. Being so, you know, here on the, I mean, I'm in South Georgia, so, I mean, you know, we, we already proved that elk can't survive here. We've already killed all them. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, I don't get to go out west much and do it. I love to do it. Um, but it's one of those things every time I get a chance, I'm going to, I'm going to hop on. Okay. And then I was this close. I had a, a Colorado antelope elk combo hunt lined up. And no. then the landowner vouchers fell through. Oh, so, dang it. Uh, dang it. I was looking forward to that. This, and this ranch hadn't been hunted for antelope in like 20 years. Oh, so, and the guy was like, I legit have six antelope that I know where they stay that are over 90 inches. No way. Yeah. And I was oh. like, I'm in. I'm in. Like, what do I need <laughs> yeah, to do? Oh. I have that. And then, uh. and then the bulls, I mean, he, you know, he was saying, well, you know, bulls out here around 320 or so, which is, you know, respectable. Yeah. Good yeah. time bulls. So. Heck yeah. But, that's maybe next year. I don't know. And I've got, uh, I've got a dozen points for Wyoming. So, right. um, yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to carry them over one more year. I got, I got a spot lined up. I think I can go kill a big one. Right. Dang, dude, we got to get on a hunt. We keep talking about it. It's just, we got to line this sucker out. 
Oh, Before long, you're gonna, you're gonna have to whatever. carry me. Uh, you're gonna have to be pushing me up a hill, up the hill in a wheelchair or something, man. That's, I got you. <laughs> uh, that's oh, not that man. bad yet, but uh, but no, man. I, I, again, man, I appreciate it. I admire, I admire everything you do. I know you and I. We we don't talk all, a lot, but you know, I feel like whenever we talk, we pick up right where we left off. Thank you. And I, I appreciate your friendship. I appreciate your time, and uh, I know you're gonna do well. We watch it. Thank you, bro. I appreciate it. And if you. If you want to jump on, we can chat after the fight and see how everything goes if you want. But uh, yeah. totally up to you. But I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. All right, brother. Well, you be safe out there. Y'all have a, a safe trip, and um, we'll catch up. Sounds good. Thank you, bro.